Hey everybody, good morning. Welcome to a new episode of Stocks for Breakfast. It's Monday morning, August 20, August 24th. <laughs> October 4th, 2021. Uh, I guess my coffee has not kicked in yet. I hope everybody's all brewed up and ready to go. We got a lot to talk about today. We're going to talk about the expectations for follow through today. We're going to talk about a lot of what we're looking for this week. Uh, so first, I want to say thank you, everybody. I really appreciate you joining me here today and every day. Actually, we seem to be forming a nice community here on uh, on social media, and it's pretty exciting to have conversations. The biggest thing I'd like to ask is something that I talk about all the time in our boot camp, uh, which is participate. That's really the biggest thing because we have a much better conversation when it's more of a back and forth than me just talking at you, which is really the, the, the entire point of these. So if you have any questions about something, especially after the video is done or something you want to have uh, discussed, make sure you leave a comment below in the video, we, uh, all the way down below the video, because we always get back to you as soon as you can. Uh, and there's always stuff that comes up after the fact. So I'm more than happy to um, go back in and answer your questions um, after that. So stick around. I'll be back in just one second. So obviously, everything we talk about here is for educational purposes. It is up to you to make the final decision. It's up to us to help you make better decisions. So we're going to get started. We're going to get right into it. A lot to cover today. We're actually going to start out with Tesla, uh, which is right at the top of the list. We're going to get into the email that we sent out this morning. Uh, we're going to discuss the difference between a tracking journal and a trading journal and how to use them. We got a lot going on today. We actually talked about about 16 different stocks that are possibly in play today. The market, the futures are actually dipping a little bit this morning, which also brings up something we're going to talk about, which is buying versus a short covering rally and how to spot the difference between the two and how to know when to build a position versus people are just getting out of that trade. Uh, so we're going to actually start out with Tesla. We're going to bring Tesla up on the screen first. Uh, in case you didn't see the news over the weekend, a lot of good news coming out of Tesla on deliveries. And you know we have that battle now between the Chinese government and the Chinese electric vehicle stocks versus us <laughs> on this side of the pond, I should say. Um, and we have, obviously we have Tesla, GM, Ford, and uh, even Lucid at this point. Um, the EV market is in play pretty much every day. It's really just a question of which stocks are getting followed through that day. Uh, so obviously Tesla, we talked about it last week, is maintaining the bid. But now we're actually up uh, 3%. It was over $800 just a couple of minutes ago. So we're kind of dancing right around that $800 level. Now we have to be careful. Now we actually need to say, if we're going to look to buy Tesla stock today, what do we need to see? Which actually is what we're going to take a look at first right now. I want to give everybody kind of a behind the scenes look because we're going to get into Tesla. We're going to get into a bunch of other stocks. We're going to talk about um, energy stocks, industrial stocks, uh, <laughs> basic material stocks, which one of those. We're also going to talk about healthcare stocks and technology stocks. Technology stocks have been kind of dragging the market down the last uh, week and a half, and if not even longer than that, probably around three weeks. We really need them to wake up. I don't know if you saw the news on Facebook. Facebook stock is reacting to the whistleblower actually came out and uh, showed who he was or who they were. Uh, and the stock is actually taking a hit again this morning. So Facebook and larger tech stocks are actually kind of the anchor on the market, as Chris Forrest said last night in our weekly um, coaching call. So you actually, you know, while we're doing this, while I go through this, do me a favor, just type in what stock you believe is going to be your top trade coming into this week, because we're actually going to talk about in a second, um, we're going to talk about in a second, the difference between a tracking journal and a trading journal. And I think it would be kind of fun to see who is uh, building out both heading into it. And we're going to show you what I mean by that in a second. Uh, let's see. Hey, John, uh, does the chip problem affect the EVs? The chip problem is affecting everybody right now. We were actually talking about this last week. Uh, if, you've, if you've been out to buy a car right now, and, and did everybody see the earnings for CarMax last week? Uh, KMX. Uh, should have been like writing all over the world if anybody actually went out and looked for a new car anytime, or actually a used car anytime over the last six months. The problem with these companies and, and CarMax is actually a place that I visited. We ended up one of our cars was uh, definitely we got tired of fixing it. So we ended up getting a, a Mazda CX-5, a 2018 Mazda CX-5. But how does that apply to CarMax? Essentially, when we went into the dealership, there were cars everywhere, but they couldn't sell any of them. 
the problem with both the chip shortage for new inventory, uh, but more importantly, the global crisis that we're going in right now, nobody's working at motor vehicles. They couldn't even get the titles to sell the cars on their lot. So not shocking that the stock actually imploded last week. So it was kind of interesting to see that play out in the real world, um, as well as um, in the stock itself, based on something that we saw. But as far as the chip shortage, look, I mean, it's affecting everybody. Used car vehicles right now are actually more expensive in a lot of places than actually new cars because they can't even get inventory. So, yeah, as of right now, it's, it's absolutely still affecting them. Uh, I do want to walk through a couple of, we just talked about Tesla, and obviously we need to see it hold the bid, stay above 800 at this point, and you can see where we mapped it out. And by the way, if you're not doing this with your stocks, I strongly recommend you do this. You get in there, and it's what we call working the charts. And you can see that we've been working the Tesla chart for a while. So now 876 is the next level that we're going to be looking for if Tesla holds this bid above 800. So now again, remember, there's buy the rumors, sell the news. And today now we have the news came out in Tesla. We need for it to maintain that bid to stay up there. Richard's actually talking about uh, Netflix, which is actually a really good stock to be mentioning here today as well, because uh, Netflix, actually one of the few stocks last week that broke out and maintained that level. So we run our scans at the end of every day. One of the big things to say is, did a stock hit a certain price, but then did it stay there? And Netflix actually did. Uh, it punched up, stayed there on Thursday recovered on Friday. Now, what we want to see is, did it rally on Friday because the bid is still under that stock? Or did it rally because of the short covering in the big picture of the market? And actually, somebody typed in here, uh, David, about um, Merck. So Merck and Lucid. Hey, Simon, how's it going, pal? Merck and Lucid are going to be two stocks that should be on your radar to watch this week. And again, we're going to talk about in a second the difference between a tracking journal and a trading journal. So Merck obviously had good news last week and the stock exploded, very similar to what LCID did last week, where the stock actually had, a, let me zoom this out a little bit, the stock actually had a really big move up prior to news coming out, and now it's kind of dancing around. So th this is something I want to point out, and I'm actually going to bring this into the uh, screen here for a second. So this was a conversation that, and we have a lot of these conversations in our community. This is one of the most, I think, one of the best things about our community uh, I've been mentioning a lot about the tracking journal, okay? And Michelle asked where the information on it was, right? So Joe, uh, Joey O posted in there, the difference between a trading journal and a tracking journal. Trading journal is everything about the strategy, the setups, the risk reward, everything. You might want to screenshot this because it's, it's pretty important stuff. Let me actually zoom it out just a little bit so you can see the whole thing, okay? So this is everything that we're looking at now. And a tracking journal is another watch list. So I want, I, I'll bring this back up on the screen, but I want to, I want to talk about this because it really, really matters. One of the ways that we set up trades, especially on the swing trading side, but we do it on the day trading side in the community as well, is we make a very clear distinction between um, a, a entry that we're looking for at a certain price. And we typically call that out with a buy stop order or a limit order. And I'll put the price in there when I call a trade out versus an alert. An alert means the stock is in our tracking journal, which means when it gets up to that price or down to that price, then we reevaluate for new entry. The biggest reason that you want to have these in, you want to have both of them. The biggest reason you want to have both of them is, you know, raise your hand if there's been a stock that you've been watching and you forget about it. And then like a week later, you're like, oh, the thing went up $10 without me. And you're pissed off because you had it in your plan, but you weren't ready to to know about it. In other words, you didn't set the alert. So I want I just want to bring this home and I, and I want to inspire you to make sure you start creating a tracking journal. So Joe makes a really good point here and I just wanted to bring it home just a little bit. Tracking journal is if then scenarios that we post here that are not trades yet, but alerts are stuff we prepare for. So we do this all day every day in our community where we're posting ideas uh stuff to look at. So if you can see here this is stuff that we posted over the weekend, and these are ideas. So TRIP met the criteria. LYV met the criteria. If you start to see throughout the week and the weekend, we're posting ideas of stocks that are not quite there yet, but setting up. It's very, very important to have this kind of collaboration in the community because we want to be on top of ideas, even if they're not in play right now. So again, I just want to bring this home in a big way so that you start doing this because this is a monster part of being a profitable trader. 
your trading game plan are stocks that you plan to trade now. Your tracking journal are a list of ideas that you have certain price points that if they get up to that level, then you reevaluate the market, the industry group, the sector, and then you look for the trade. Probably the easiest way to do that for yourself is to just open up a Google Doc, and I usually date it by the month. And I know a lot of people like to use a spreadsheet, but the tracking journal is more designed to, to kind of spill your thoughts out on the whole scenario. And if that scenario unfolds, you're ready because you basically scripted it out. If it gets up there or down there, you're fine. You know what to do. If it doesn't get there, it's no big deal. But the next level of that is that it's imperative that you set alerts at those price levels. And if it's a stock you're looking to move up. So, for example, we've been talking about uh, Morgan Stanley um, up at that level. So Morgan Stanley 106 was the level that we were looking for. Same thing with LAC right now at 23 has been the level that we're looking for. If it's going up to that price, you want to have the alert set before that because you want to be alerted before it gets there. Then you can evaluate. You can look at the volume, the average volume, how the volume is trading now, where it is relative to the opening price for the week and the month. And then it goes from tracking journal into trading journal. So what I want to mention now, though, is I want to walk you through exactly what that looks like. So if you take a look here and we're going to start out with uh, the if then scenario that I crafted for today. So obviously today, and we start out with if then. So if then means that I'm cracking the code on what I anticipate doing. Then we start to walk. And by the way, this is kind of what goes into that tracking journal. Impressive Friday afternoon for most of the market. So again, just for the sake of this video, I want to make sure that the context of what I mean is here. So this is what happened in the afternoon on Friday. The market and the market internals and a lot of the major sectors actually caught a bid in the afternoon. Now, this is the this is what a lot of traders miss, is you only take that price action and you don't put it in the context of the recent price action over the last week, over the last month, over the last couple of months. So we put Friday's price action in the context of the prior five days of trading. Let me zoom that out a little bit. Friday's price action after the market and specifically the SPY here traded from 444 down to 428, a $16 decline into Friday afternoon. So into Friday afternoon, buyers came into the market that were short over that week, covered their shorts, which means they were getting out of positions. Short covering rallies are generally faster. So now today, we're looking for follow-up coming into the day to say, okay, short covering, they're exiting positions. There's speed to get out of those trades because the end of the week is coming. I want to book those profits and you start to get out. So you're out of the position. So what we're looking for today in our if then is if the market catches a bid, goes well bid this week, then we're confirming short covering translated into new buying. New buying is starting a position. That's longer term. Exiting a position means I'm done and I go to look for another position. So in your mind, anytime a stock has been going down and starts to rally, if it's a, sh and I'm going to show you a perfect example in just one second. If it rallies fast, that's short covering. You need more proof. If it goes down and kind of slowly starts to drift higher, which we're actually seeing in win a little bit right now, that's new buying stepping in. Then you still need that confirmation. So the one, the one idea that I want to talk about, which was Peloton, really good example over here. So if you look at the bigger picture, we had a bunch of selling here for basically about two months. And then we had a fast short covering rally off of that, and then selling came back in. We're seeing a little bit different right now in Win, where Win actually has had this longer term move to the downside. We're also seeing a lot of the gaming stocks find some bids right now. We'll take a look at that in a second. But look at the volume on the bottom here. This is the difference between somebody who's learning how to be a, a trader or what we call a tape reader. You start to put the pieces together where the volume and the price action and where and when it happens is really how you stack that argument to really have conviction in starting to build your ideas. So when, while still in bearish order flow, this is something that would go into the tracking journal. So you'll hear me put the, the comments of the tracking journal where, the tape is starting to change in wind, volume's piking up, it stopped going down, looking for follow through. So now because the most recent days have started to show some bullish price action with increased volume, it's now interesting to me, but not a trade yet. So what would it make me want to start trading? Well, I'd certainly want to see the average volume, the daily volumes, and let me zoom that out just a little bit. Let me, let me come on to the side here. 
I certainly want to see this volume start to pick up. Now, again, why do I want to see that volume pick up? Remember, everything that we do is all based on uh, we want to have a discussion about it. We want you to have absolute cl clarity on what you're looking at. I want to see smart money attention. I want to see institutions saying, all right, we have attention on the stock and we're going to commit real money to that idea. OK, so we're not seeing that yet. We see big volume coming in and stop going down. We see the weekly chart which is what we're looking to see in a lot of other stocks. The weekly chart went well bid. So we actually have one, two, three weeks in a row where the volume has increased on a weekly basis, but we're not seeing that daily step up yet. So this stock is now interesting. So how does that translate into something bigger? And that's actually what I want to get into right now. Uh, I'm sure everybody here reads all over the weekend, right? I'm sure everybody is, you know, again, 730 in the morning. We're talking about stocks. There's one podcast that I want you to listen to this weekend because it translates directly into what we're talking about here in WIN, which is how to manage your risk, how to manage your position size, and how to manage your profit targets. Now, again, adjusting your profit targets and your position sizing is not changing your strategy. It's adapting your strategy to what's available. So normally we'll look for a three to one uh, risk reward ratio because, again, we want that three as our initial profit target to justify if we decide to take the risk. So let's say for argument's sake, an active trader comes to me and says, Pete, I want to start trading win because I like the way it bottomed out. We would have the argument, meaning a healthy conversation about, well, what is the reason you're choosing to accept risk? Well, two weeks ago, win bottomed out, traded into a bullish U-turn on heavier volume. Last week, win followed up with higher highs and higher lows, open near the low, close near the high. I'm looking for follow through this week. So it's not going to be anything more than day trades. But if the stock meets the criteria that we look at, we can day trade it. And then eventually, if it starts to show more increased volume, then maybe we could look to start to build a position. So we just adjusted the order flow strategy to much shorter time frame based on just the last two weeks of price action. We need to see a little bit more. We need to see this longer term trend broken. So if we break out here. And we go here, we can see that it went parabolic to the downside, bearish gap, bearish gap. Obviously, that was all the conversation going on in, in Macau and that whole area. But now volume stepped up and it stopped going down. So you see how we just adjusted order flow to shorter time frames based on the recent order flow, but acknowledging that we don't have the longer term picture on our side. So right now, there's a difference between the selling stopped short term versus new buying. So we just looked at a couple of stocks that had short covering, including the market, which means that the bigger selling is still in place. And we're seeing that in the market overnight. If you take a look at the S&P futures, we're actually down 18, 19 points. So that kind of confirms what we said about Friday afternoon's rally. Of course, we wanted to see follow through today. And I'll, I'll talk about that uh, in a second. But the point that I wanted to make is uh, I want I think it's very smart. We, we shared this with our community. I'm going to post this in the link here. Um, and if you want, you can take a look at that. It was an, it was a interview and IBD did with Mark Minervini, who's a, a stock investing champion. The whole, uh, you can watch it and listen to it, the whole thing. But the, the, the crux to the point is how he is discussing adapting his profit targets, adapting being in cash and adapting his position sizing to the current market conditions that we have right now. Cause we have a ton of questions in our community right now about, uh, I'm not making enough on my swing trades. I'm not whole, I'm not seeing follow through on my swing trades and what am I doing wrong? And you're not really doing anything wrong. I mean, if it's the market conditions, it's what's going on right now. The we're not in this anymore. And let me actually go to the spy a little bit easier to see. We're not in this anymore. We are in this now where the selling and especially if we go over to the weekly chart we are seeing the selling being a little bit more aggressive. So you can see well-offered, 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 and into an inside week. So we had three weeks of selling in the SPY, and then last week was neutral, following up with more selling today. So the conditions of the market are dictating that we adjust what we're willing to take for profits because of the anchor that's on the market right now, which as of this moment is healthcare stocks and uh, technology stocks. Um, so what does that mean? That means now that we need to make a little bit more of a rotation into where we are seeing buying. And those are the types of stocks where we can reasonably expect a little bit of follow through, which is technically 
energy stocks right now in a big way. So if we dig a deeper dive into what we look at every day and how we start every day, which is our sector rotation, okay? Sector rotation, energy, we've been on energy for a while. If I zoom this out, you can see it's green across the board, both on the day, the week, and the last month. Financials, a couple of them pulled back recently. We're going to be looking at American Express. We'll take a look at a couple of those right now while we're on the subject. Uh, let me pull up on the daily chart. AXP had a vicious rally off the lows, pulled back, went well bid on Friday. You can actually see it's still well bid here right now. Morgan Stanley pulled back a little bit deep, but uh, Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan. I think out of the two, I'm looking at American Express and JP Morgan from the financials this week. OK, so working our way over into the rest of the list, uh, basic materials and industrials. And you can see here on the bottom, healthcare and technology started until this changes. We're going to keep working towards the top of the list. Got some questions. Ted asked a good question. Um, where was that question, Ted? Uh, how do you keep up with all finance news and general stocks, commodities, cryptos? Look, bottom line is you have to read. Uh, there's really no other way to put it. You have to read. You have to. Probably the simplest way is to go to uh, Finviz or, or um, Stock Twits or anything along those lines, and you start to see what's trending. Um, but there's actually two different ways of keeping up on it. Number one is obviously you can go to the charts and, and make your own if then scenarios. But the second one is you need to focus on the news that affects the stocks that you normally trade. So if you're trading electric vehicle stocks, you got to be all over those. If you're trading tech stocks, you got to be all over those. Um, but eventually you have to get to the point where you're focusing mostly on macroeconomic concerns, stuff that's going on in Washington, and then you start to drill down on the news specific to your stocks. But you know what? Actually, uh, let me actually, I'm going to come off the screen for a second. Um, I want to give you a uh, kind of like a ninja thing. Uh, let me see if I can find it in my inbox because it's kind of cool. Um, uh, here. All right. So this is kind of cool here. So if, if you're actually looking to um, really drill down on the news that you're watching, and this is for Ted and everybody, the news that you're watching can be sorted out in as many different ways as possible. So you can see here that I have one of my Google alerts, uh, which is super easy to do. Just go into Google, type in Google alerts, set up any type of news that's relevant to what you're trading, and then you could actually choose inside of Google Alerts how often you want to get news on, the, on that particular topic. So, Ted, I would absolutely uh, start setting up Google Alerts because at the end of every day, this is literally one of the top things that I do every day is I think it's like eight o'clock at night or something like that. I start getting all of my Google Alerts on, on crypto, on Kathy Wood, on SPACs, on EV stocks, on financial stocks. And it kind of it's not everything, but it certainly gives you a foundation of what's going on in those particular stocks at that moment and and kind of getting the global picture of what to watch. And look, let's face it. I mean, one of the most shocking things in the market right now is the speed with which information travels. I mean, in a heartbeat, everybody's watching Twitter stock tweets and has access to everything quickly and markets change on a dime. I'm not saying to trade off a of news like that because you, it, it's really it's exhausting and you got to be on top of it the whole time. Me, meaning, oh, the news came out, I got to do something. News came out, I got to do something. That's a little different from what we're talking about right now. What we're talking about right now is actually gathering the news to come up with a feel for what you're looking at. So Google Alerts, in my opinion, one of the best ways you can do it. Another way to do it, if you don't know, is to use, um, what the heck is it called? Uh, I have it on my phone. Um, Feedly, F E E. D L Y. You can actually go into Feedly and aggregate everything that you want. Let me see if I can pull it up. Uh, I also think that this is a part of Google as well. So if you go to Feedly.com, you can actually go in there. Uh, let me make that bigger so you can see it. Uh, Feedly.com. If you go in there, you can actually um, make your own uh, aggregation of everything that you want to watch. So that's actually pretty cool um, as well. Uh, let me just answer Robert's question here because it's a pretty uh, a pretty good one. So we're talking about well bid and well offered. Well bid means higher highs and higher lows. Well offered means lower highs and lower lows. So just so everybody understands where well bid and well offered come from. Uh, if, if you know my background, I started trading obviously in the early 2000s, April of 2000 actually. So back then we would do a lot of NASDAQ trading and we were mostly watching level two. 
So when you were trading a stock and you saw a lot of active selling, so in time and sales, you saw red prints, red prints, red prints, red prints. And normally all that active selling, the stock should go down. But all of a sudden, Goldman Sachs would go to the bid and they'd be just buying all the shares without moving the stock. So you'd scream out to the office and you'd say, you know, I'll just use the stock as an example. Intel is well bid. Goldman's holding it up. So that basically means that Goldman is sitting there on the bid. They have a big buy order and they're absorbing all of the shares. So you would technically join the bid with them. Sellers would stop seeing the selling happening. And then all of a sudden you start to see trades on the offer and the stock would go up. You'd scalp, look for the next trade and go back. So the way we kind of translated that into the charts where I, I said for a while, how do I translate what I did back then on level two? So it's simple to read on the charts and essentially we're saying higher lows and higher highs is well bid, lower lows and lower highs are well offered. So well offered be the same thing on the other side where you see a green, 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 a bunch of buying, bunch of buying. But at that time, let's say Merrill Lynch was just sitting there absorbing all the shares and the stock wouldn't go up. All of a sudden, everybody who just bought sees the stock is not going up anymore. They panic. You start to see time and sales turn red and green, red and green, red and green, which is indecision, which is what you see here. Again, we're bringing this all together with uh, candlesticks. Indecision here is red and green, red and green, red and green. And then you start to see it melt back down in the other direction. That's old school tape reading on level two in time and sales. We just make it a lot easier by looking at it on the charts, by looking for higher highs, closing on the highs, higher highs, higher lows, lower lows, lower and indecision. If you really think about it, those are the only three candlesticks that you need to know. Uh, higher, well bid, well offered and indecision, which we call melted candles because they have a smaller body. Uh, so that's kind of cool that you can put all those pieces together. And quite honestly, I think it's a lot easier to do with uh, looking at these instead of watching every tick and time and sales. I will tell you, however, though, on my trade station screen, I, I have all the charts that I look at. But one big strip on the right side, I have time and sales set for 100 shares or more. So whatever stock I happen to be watching, I'm watching the prints because I want to see the consistency of the prints and whether or not that stock is in play. So if I see well bid on a five minute chart, for example, I'm day trading and I look over at time and sales and I'm seeing green prints and consistent green prints and higher prints. So in other words, it's trading eighty dollars and five cents, six cents, seven cents. I'm like, all right, buyers are stepping in. Nobody's holding it down. I feel comfortable with I'm going to get a head start on this trade. These are all kind of really cool stuff for us to have, you know, kind of have really good discussions about. All right. Um, so let's see. Myers talking about UAL. Yeah. So let's get into the rest of what we were just talking about. Uh, let me actually pull that back up for a second. Uh, I want to get into the other stocks so that everybody has um, some context on uh, what we we're looking at. So I want to just finish up on the if then stuff. So, again, uh, if you want, you can actually take a screenshot of this. Uh, today we're looking after the short covering rally. So what's the game plan for the week? So you can see this is my game plan and partly my tracking journal. So to raise our conviction and our position size and our targets, all of those things should be in your head right now. What would make me want to trade bigger heading into this week? We need the market to go well bid. So again, Robert, thanks for asking that question. Now we've answered what well bid means. So we need to see the daily candlesticks on the SPY as well as the hopefully the weekly candlestick. We want to see this go well bid. So what we're looking for is for this, even though we're opening lower right now, we want to see it go higher, high, higher, low like this and and close on the high. So you see we added all of that and close near the high. So this is an important distinction here. OK, so that'd be well bid. So we need to hold today's open price for the week as well. So when the weekly candlestick opens, we also want to see that the candle stays green. So you can see this week here, we held the bid. This week here, we did not. That's what we're looking for. So we're mapping out the entire week. So we also need to see tech stocks come off the mat and show some bullish flow. We didn't see that last week. We just went through all of those major tech stocks, Facebook, Microsoft, Apple. None of them are showing bullish order flow right now. We need to break this short term. If we see that happen, that will be a conviction builder for exactly what we're doing, okay? Also, we said that we track the order flow every day, so we're starting to watch basic materials and industrial stocks work their way up the list. So that means if they catch a bid, we're starting to look at these stocks. So we have the list of stocks. If you want, you can take a screenshot of that. Now we take it further. 
if that doesn't unfold, tech stocks and healthcare drag the market. So that's where we'll be. So now we're saying, if that happens, then I'm going to be doing this. So we're going to be taking a look at short selling tech stocks and healthcare stocks, whether that's actually shorting or uh, the bid. We just talked about when gaming stocks, which is a very general conversation about gaming stocks, caught a bid specifically on Friday. So what does that mean? I just like that one little thing. I just said caught a bid on Friday. So that means in that context, I'm only looking at the order flow for one day. So if we're talking about one day, how does that translate into position size? Lower. It's one day of buying. How does that translate into profit target? Probably exit into momentum as opposed to building a position because the smart money hasn't started to build a position yet in pen or win. However, that's a different story in CZR. So let's take a look at those three different charts. So we have pen. You can see pen coming off the mat a little bit on Friday. And coming off the mat means pretty good day, right? But if you look to the left, it's still stuck. 85 is, again, setting the alerts. 85 in pen right now is where the tracking journal number is that you need to set that alert. So if we go over to win, we just had the whole conversation about win. Just one good day possibly coming off the mat. CZR is a little bit different. CZR is actually breaking out since they've had that, that um, conversation, that whole deal that they're negotiating with ESPN, different story in CZR. All right. So continue to get back into the if then scenarios um, for the game plan. OK, so we just broke that up. Right. Talked about if this, then that. Right. Peloton is another one. Peloton oversold. So negative press in the Wall Street Journal over the weekend. Basically saying that global crisis, as the global crisis nears an end, oh God, let's send a prayer out that it actually is, Peloton bikes are becoming more close hangers, and I think the stock will be in play this week. So now I'm not putting a long or short on Peloton. I think that the news story coming out on Peloton and the world kind of getting back to normal will have the stock in play. It could be a day trade long. It could be a short sell. Um, but I think that the short side is a little bit overdone. And it's most likely going to be a back and forth type trade for active traders this week. So do you see how we start to um, put the pieces together based on the recent price action, based on Ted's question before about how do you organize all the news flow, set up Google alerts, go to Feedly and set up alerts, literally have that, e that mail sent to you at nine o'clock at night. First thing the next morning, you get in there and you start reading the news that matters to you. So you can see I have Stack, I have Kathy Woods, I have EV stocks, I have Bitcoin, I have cryptocurrency, I have tech stocks, and then you can make a list of other ones. It literally gets emailed to you, and then you go in the next day, and you get caught up on the news that matters to you after you go back in and you start to review your trading game plan. So we got a lot to cover this week and a lot going on. So what we're looking for now is we're looking for the market to go well bid. We're looking for today's lower opening to catch a bid. If tech stocks remain weak, the Selling pressure will probably be a little bit heavier. We're looking for Merck to catch a bid. Oh, and actually the other stocks that we were looking at, Merck. Let me actually make that a little bigger so you can see it. Merck, LCID, definitely one that we are looking for. This buying pressure to step back up, a bigger trade over 28. But as we've been talking about the, the whole morning, the uh, electric vehicle stocks, and obviously Tesla at the top of that list um, are going to be in play. Tesla... A little bit below 800. So again, NEO, LI in the Chinese electric vehicle and XPEV also had good news this weekend. But a good question that we got from somebody is whether or not those stocks are tradable right now. Look, I mean, the Chinese government, for all intents and purposes, is squeezing everything right now. There, I, I think I saw an article. Uh, the exact number was Jack Ma's companies lost $780 billion recently with the Chinese crackdown on keeping these companies that they're perceiving to be monopolies uh, in check. So you really need to make a decision. If you're going to start investing in Chinese electric vehicle stocks right now, longer term, you really need to be accepting that risk on the fact that these stocks get another haircut. If more news comes in, it would be one of those situations where if I was, I would be tiptoeing in because that news is not done. And that's, it's a different scenario than earnings and deliveries and all that kind of stuff like positive news on Tesla, Ford, GM, and um, uh, what was the other one? Tesla, Ford, GM. Oh, and Lucid. Uh, so there's a lot to pay attention to this week. But again, here, Michael, yep. Lucid, Lucid at 40 billion. I think they really push higher. Yeah, I, I agree. We have, we're looking at 28 as the level for Lucid there as well. So we covered a ton of stuff today. Um, one thing I would like to ask, if you don't mind, if you find these videos helpful, first, I want to say I'm very grateful. 
do me a favor, click down and smash that like button because it lets it lets me know that this is the kind of stuff that you like, and also let YouTube know that we're doing the, we're doing right by you. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe and alert button. Uh, but more importantly, like I said, I want to help you as much as I can. After this video is over, and if you watch it again, because we covered a ton of stuff today, leave more comments below the video, and I promise you I'll get back to you as soon as I can. All right? Uh, I have to head over to our game plan meeting. So I just want to say, everybody, thank you so much. Very, very grateful that you choose to join me here every day. Remember, it's every morning at 730, Monday through Friday. So set your alert. We have a lot of stuff to cover every day. So leave a comment below. Smash that like button. Have an awesome day. We mapped out the if-then scenarios today. Let's see how they unfold. Take care, everybody. Have an awesome day.